to tell you the honest truth, I don't even know what it is. I don't even, I don't even know what Git flow is. One of the more popular, certainly more widely recommended approaches to managing change into production is Git flow. I confess that I've never been a fan. I'm a continuous integration guy and Git flow prevents real continuous integration. By the way, I do not speak whatever subtitles are currently being displayed. I'm not exactly sure why this has been chosen for me. But okay, so I have no idea what Git flow is. Teach me, daddy. For a long time, I and people like me who value fast, efficient CI over feature branching have felt that we were kind of talking at the margins. Yeah. I think that many, if not most people disagreed with us on this. However, one of my friends has recently had some success in moving. I mean, sometimes feature branches are necessary or perhaps by how the team is structured, the people working on it, they're necessary. I don't know if you can ever get away from them fully. Um, anyways. Moving the conversation on a bit. So I thought that this may be a good opportunity to explore Gitflow and its use in a little bit more detail. So what is Gitflow? Okay, so Gitflow is direct contradiction to continuous integration. That's what we're learning thus far. Interesting, so is it a, like another form of CI? Is that what we're looking at? And why is it incompatible with continuous integration and continuous delivery? By the way, I do not believe in continuous delivery. Um, I don't. I don't believe in continuous delivery. I think continuous delivery is crazy. Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. And if you haven't been here before, please do hit... Not like him, continuous delivery. I'm just saying like if every single commit you make goes straight to production, I think that's crazy talk. Subscribe, and if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. I'd like to begin by thanking our sponsors, Harness, Equal Experts, Octopus, and Specflow. They're helping us to grow our channel, and so please do support them by checking out their yeah, links in the description check them below. Out. If you'd like to know more about my preferred approach to continuous integration and branching, check out my training course, and that's the deployment training course. where I'll cover this in a lot more detail. All right, Gitflow let's, was let's invented in 2010 by Vincent Dreesen. This was the okay. same year that my... Do we all hate... Do all my homies hate Vincent Dreesen? Is that what I'm taking out of this? Do we all hate... Well, me and my homies hate this guy? My book, Continuous Delivery, was published. So Gitflow was certainly not designed with development approaches like CD in mind, really. This is the Gitflow model. It's based around two branches, usually called Develop and Master. This approach is based on the use of Git, hence the name. And even though one of these branches is called master, the name choices are somewhat arbitrary, really. It doesn't mean the same thing as master in, does in Git. Git is a distributed version control system, meaning that every clone of the repo is the same. Interesting, interesting. I'm not necessarily opposed to what I'm seeing, just so you know. Just throwing this out there. I'm not opposed to what I'm seeing, okay? So, I guess the real question is, why should it be different? The selection of a one true branch for master is purely by convention, not imposed by Git itself. Supporting these branches are a bunch of others. Feature branches, release branches, and hotfix branches. So five different kinds of branch in all. But in practice, there may be many more branches than that in play, because there'll be multiple versions of feature, hotfix, and release branches. Okay. This is a complex okay. branching strategy. And as I said in the intro, works against continuous integration. I'm curious how it works against continuous integration because your CI is something that happens per merge on some set of branches. So why couldn't you just have CI in develop? Am I missing something? I'm looking at I'm looking at chat right now. Um, is there something that I don't understand here? Because I, I totally get it if I don't understand that. Um, yeah, I know. Don't don't uh, don't look at the versions. But real real talk, like to me. I mean, one problem I have is that I have people, you know, relying on some of the tools that I make. And so one of the tools that I make is integrated via just having a master branch, right? Whatever's whatever's there. We don't even, they just take whatever's latest right now. We do have some releasing mechanism, but it's just like, you know, we're it's just like such a low whatever that we haven't really productized it in any sort of way. It's just kind of like the just a GSD, get shit done. And so having a develop branch is quite nice because it allows me to have a you know, a place where I can work, make sure so things are good, continuous integration built on that one, and then just merge over to master every now and then, right? I, I don't see how this one somehow makes I mean, it worse or better. That, I have employed branching strategies like these on projects in the past, but that was before I learned how to do continuous integration properly. Okay. So what do I mean by it works against CI? 
Here's one of my favorite descriptions of continuous integration from the inventors. What if the engineers didn't hold on to modules for more than a moment? What if they made their correct change and presto, everyone's computer instantly had that version of the module? Continuous integration is about establishing and maintaining a shared, accurate view of the state of the system that we're working is that the Is that the definition of continuous integration? Maybe, I mean, I guess I, I've probably been using it wrong. So, I mean, I'm fine saying I've used it wrong. For single branch workflow, a lot of testing prevents pushing it without triggering your CI. Um, is that, is that, because I mean, I, I'm fine being wrong. I've used words wrong, right? I've definitely used, I've definitely used words wrong. So I'm fine with that. We aren't guessing whether our changes will work together. We're checking frequently, multiple times per day, continuously. Here's another quote from the C. I mean, it's, it's, it, obviously that quote is, is completely, you know, idealized because let's just say you have CI. To what level do you run CI on every single commit? Now, there's plenty of different levels you could be running. Like, say, for instance, for television to release, it requires, I, I forget, it's like one to 2,000 separate integration tests that are ran. It takes about, you know, 100 machines over the course of six hours to really get it done. So does, is that, I mean, do you want that at all points? Or is just having any branch as the branch of truth versus what is the branch of truth for production? Like, is there is there a difference for that? Does it have to be, do they have to be the same? That's my question, which is, does does what the developer worked on have to match exactly what's in production? I don't I don't think so. Do you do that in PR? No. That's why we have smaller PR, right? Smaller PRs, they, there's there's develop CI. Develop CI is smaller, runs in about 40 minutes, a smaller subset of the integration stuff, just like the most important stuff, just to make sure it all effectively works. And then you can auto merge in if you have the right stuff. So it just kind of goes in, goes out, you know, pretty straightforward. Yeah, unit tests take, uh, gosh, three minutes to run. Uh, just because, you know, there's like 2,000 unit tests. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, see, that makes sense. I know there's like, it, it totally depends, right? It, just like right here, the medical devices, right? There's there's different levels of severity. And our, like one of the things I work on is a C++ environment in which these tests are really complicated, and they take a long time. I worked on a product where the nightly test took 30 hours long. That doesn't make any sense because that would be night and day, then night again, then day again. It's a wiki description that I like. What? The <laughs> fundamental assumption of continuous integration that there's only one interesting version, the current one. Really? Am I just totally wrong on my definition? Because I'm completely fine. Okay, so what is... What is the name for the thing that happens in which you commit to a branch and it run a lot of tests, but it doesn't necessarily have implication for what master or slash production has to be? What is that process called? Are they mixing? Is this a mix of two concepts? I, I thought that we always called that CI or Ligma for short. I thought that was CI. Is there? Oh, is this like one of those ideas of like there's... There's CI the 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 thing, and then there's also like the philosophy of CI, which might be slightly different than say CI itself. Is that what we're looking at here? Is this like the the philosophy of said CI? Okay. Huh. Let's look at where we can achieve that clear, correct picture of the current version in Gitflow. Is it here on the develop branch? Well, it's close, but it's not definitive. What if we evaluate our changes as we commit them to the develop branch? Is this really the truth? No, this isn't the collection of changes that will definitively end up in production. We may have hotfixes that haven't been merged back into develop yet. So develop and master are for a short time out of step. Maybe we is made some okay, changes though? to develop that we decided at the- I think this is a very singular worldview in the sense that everything you change must be also what is in production. Like it just, it cannot, like what I work on the C++ application on Netflix, that this, this can't exist. Like it, it cannot exist. What he is suggesting that somehow these should be in line. They, they literally cannot. 
uh, because, like, what do we do with a product that was launched in 20, uh, 2001? That could have hotfixes. It's a C++ application with a certain set of, like, ways in which the partner in integrates. You can't just change that. Right? They can't just the last redo thing, their television and then launch reason. that in production. So all of our evaluations up to that thing. point were based on incorrect assumptions. I can imagine fans of Gitflow at this point now smiling and saying, Dave doesn't understand. We work to keep the developer master in step. Well, let's pose the question the other way around. If developer and master are kept really close together in terms of changes, what's the point of having both? And so risking... One represents the state of production, one represents the state of develop them being even for a moment out of step. Why don't we instead use our version control systems to do its job and control the versions that we're interested in? So I can imagine using the developed branch as the truth, but that would eliminate the need for the master branch and the hotfix fix branch altogether. Merging all of the changes into develop, whether new development hotfix or bug fix, and releasing changes into production direct from there. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I can, I can, I'm fine with that as in develop can be this place in which you just literally cut the releases and that what goes. That doesn't really bother me. It's more of these feature branches because inevitably in larger, more mature products, there's just changes that cannot become an atomic commit. Like it just, it can't be unless if you're doing the mega merge. And we all know about the mega merge. We've all lived through mega merge. Sometimes it just can't exist in production. Like imagine if you're replacing... Uh, some amount of react with solid js you can't just you can't just like it's very hard to do that incrementally this is now just continuous integration or maybe continuous delivery not git flow we can think of the master hotfix and release branches as release supporting aspects of this approach they're all focused on managing change into production this is obviously important the truth of our system is what ends up in production so i think that should be the focus of our evaluation so we could decide, instead of treating develop as the truth, to evaluate our changes every time we merge a change to master. This would be accurate in terms of the changes, since that's where we release from master into production. This is the interesting current version. The only, the, that only works in a continuous integration sense, though, if we're doing that multiple times per day. By definition, continuous integration says that everyone's merging their changes together at least daily. We are also still left with the special cases of hotfixes or bug fixes. What's the current version now? The assumption that I think is built into Gitflow is that we do this merge when we think our work on a feature or bug fix is complete. If we're waiting until we think we're finished before getting feedback on our work, though, that's crap feedback. It doesn't... No, that's not true. I mean, feedback exists at many levels. I think one thing that he's miss that is definitely missing here is what is the product being built? If you release your website every single time a change goes in, you are just continuously busting cash. You're continuously having longer load times for first time rendering the page. Um, it is there's a reason why you may want to have larger regions. There's a reason why you want to do certain types of testing, right? So like for us to be able to do testing a release in production, not only do you have to do, this whole like cutting something from a specific version, then we release it to only 1% or a half percent or a 10th of a percent of the people using our product and measure a whole bunch of different things. Like, are we getting more start play errors? Are people still streaming as much as they were? Are we still getting the same amount of application starts? Right? Like, are we still getting all the stuff we need to know that this is good? Now, that does that mean all of, we should never let production we no one can commit because production is now being held back by realistic stuff what happened if we do that we push some stuff in we have a good release and then we are about to release and we also find a critical bug in our previous release in our new release we release out and there's a problem we don't know what the problem is but it seems to be worse do you make a hotfix branch then is that when it's okay like it, to me it just there's something about this that's just not adding up which is real life gets in the way a lot of these idealized kind of items. That's how I, at least I look at it. I, I could still, again, can be completely incorrect here. That is still compatible with his idea. He didn't say you always have to release to everyone. You can still do feature flags or canaries. Yeah, but what's the state of master then? That is in contention because the only thing interesting, everyone should be lockstepped and changed with each other. But there are times in which it makes no sense to do that. 
but sometimes you have to do a, like a hot fix. I've had to do a hot fix. I've broken production. Really support development. And it's certainly nothing close to continuous this guy integration. Has. So we need to up the rate of merging to master. The most sensible way to do that is to eliminate the develop and hotfix branches. And now, yet again, we're back to continuous integration. As well as I still think hotfix needs to exist because again, what happened if you cannot release this orange one due to a separate problem than releasing this blue one? But the blue one also has a completely orthogonal problem. What do you do? Do you try to fix both problems or do you simply fix the problem that's in production affecting people right at that moment? then fix this problem. This doesn't feel like CI. This feels like you're entangling the idea of organizing your commits to go to production and ensuring they're correct is different than ensuring production's correct. There are different levels of checking. I could, I, I'm fine again. Branches. Maybe we there just have different branches. definitions. I've spoken about my thoughts on feature branching before in previous videos. It's really the same line of reasoning that we've just explored for release though. As a developer, I want the clearest possible signal that my changes are safe to release. And I would much prefer to find out that my changes aren't safe to release close to the point from, at which I begin to diverge from safety, rather than after weeks of now wasted work. Even if the work isn't completely wasted, I'm not where I thought I was. Now I've more work to do than I planned because I need to get back to safety. So but isn't that, I mean, real talk though, that means that you have two tiered safety system, right? Safety one is your CI, which is a series of tests, whatever you run that ensure that whatever you're doing is correct. And then there's like case two, which is does production, does the actual, you know, boots on the ground accept your changes, right? Isn't that kind of like a, isn't that like how we all live in these two tiered kind of safety, safety systems? So I'd like feedback on the safety of my changes frequently. So that if I do make a mistake, I'll find out really quickly so that my mistake will have been a small one. What does safety mean in this context? Well, it really means that our changes are releasable. The change is of production quality. It does the job we expect it to. It works yeah, sure. along with everybody else's changes. It may not actually be production continues... quality, but we can assume that it's production quality based on our CI. Right? Integration was invented to solve. So, in a perfect world, what we'd really like is constant, you may think continuous, feedback on our changes. Every moment, you know that your changes work along with mine. And we both know that our changes together are good enough to release. The problem... To me, that just seems like, why, why, make the, why make the distinction between develop and master then? If I have all of that feedback equally strong on develop, and then I only release and just have the changes go over to what is in production. I don't see why that's a problem. This guy should do a video on how we handle a nuclear launch code. <laughs> but, real, but real talk, like, I don't see why that's any different at this point. The only thing it leaves open the door is that as a production, which will naturally stray from dev, even if you are releasing every single commit, there's still a period of time in which there is a difference. And then there is also a train of commits. So if you're like every commit, then there'd be trains of commits that need to go out. No matter what, there can be, you know, like a difference between the two, which means that there could arise a problem that requires a novel fix. The problem is that the world isn't perfect. So there are some compromises. In reality, okay. I don't really care whether your code compiles with mine while you're in the middle of typing character by character. That would be too continuous. So we break it up. Even in continuous integration, there are times when I'm working on my local copy and you on yours. But if we want this semi-continuous picture of the combined safety of our changes, then we can't afford to wait for too long. In continuous integration, most experts agree that daily integration, although too infrequent to be ideal, is just about good enough to qualify as continuous integration. So if your feature... Really? I, I always... Well, I'm a rebaser. You know me. So I take my changes. I rebase them on top of Latest Master all the time. I don't know. I just always do that. I don't, well, why wait for one day? takes longer than a day to create, you can't wait till it's finished and so do feature branching before you merge your changes. If your feature takes less than a day to create, what's the point of creating a feature branch? So is this, okay, hold on. I, I, think, I, I think I understand what he's trying to say when he says feature branch. What he's actually saying is that he literally works on master and then must have a forked version of master so that he can do a merge to master request, because I assume he doesn't push to master, right? 
he works on his version of master and then merges it over. Is that is that correct? I think that's what he's trying to say there. And real talk, that's a feature branch. If oh, he pushes directly to master. Yeah, that's terrible. Uh, there's plenty of reasons why that's terrible. Because someone can pull, and then you can find out it's broken. You're waiting on a, some other machine to tell you. Right? That that can't be good. That cannot be a good... Pushing directly to master is not good. You should have some level of checks. You should have something called CI that checks if the pushes you wish to push into master are correct enough. Now, if you have your own version of master, which you push to, and then you merge it over, you're just doing a feature branch. It, they're just both called master. It's the forks, the origins that are different. I am largely against pushing directly to master except on small changes. Uh, and Or, sorry, not small changes. On small projects in which, you know, there's, it, it's just not worth your time to set up an entire system for it. My preferred way to organize all of this is that I will work in my local repo on my copy of Master. Oh, I thought that was red pill. I'll commit changes locally frequently. Usually, just after the test that I'm working on has passed. After every successful local commit, I will push my changes to Origin Master, where that triggers the first stage in my deployment pipeline, which is really just continuous integration. Some version of this is sometimes referred to as trunk-based development, though I confess I don't really think that there's any real difference between this version of trunk-based development and continuous integration. You aren't really continuously integrating okay. if you aren't merging to we trunk have... at least once per day. Now, okay. Gitflow... Does that mean that's also everybody else's remote master? Is that what he's saying? That, that that's also everybody else's remote master? I guess what he's trying to say, he, my assumption is that if you, how he would want it set up is that you have Git hooks and you can't push to master without whatever should be running on CI should be ran on your local machine. I think that's what he would be advocating for because I don't see how you could ever have any other situation. Okay, I, I think that, I mean, I I personally don't want any of that crap running on my machine, right? It just takes up my own thought process. See my last message, sorry, you have to copy it. I'm look, you have to copy it. Adds all of these other branches. Branches by definition are defined to isolate or hide change. Continuous integration by definition is designed to expose changes. These are kind of mutual. I think the difference lies in continuous delivery and continuous deployment. Uh, you're thinking about continuous deployment, continuous delivery, and his words is ensuring you are able to release, but not actually deploying those changes to production. After pushing, you still decide whether to deploy them to production environments. Then what's the difference between develop and, and master? Again, I, I feel like this is a conflation of terms, because then why not have a develop one? And then why not have one that perfectly represents the state of master? Because you may, there just can be things out of your control that require develop to have an update. And then master itself can be in such a state or production, shall we say, that can be failing. That could be where you, you, you now have two distinct failures and you have to solve them. I don't know why you'd ever want to put yourself into that position. The exclusive ideas. At the start of this episode, I mentioned some recent moves on this topic. These are down to a friend of mine, Brian Finster, who reached out to the inventor of Gitflow, Vincent, and asked him to revise his explanation in the context of continuous delivery. I think it says a lot for Vincent that he did so. Vincent's article that introduced Gitflow now has an update. Here's a snippet. If your team is doing continuous delivery of software, I would suggest to adopt a much simpler workflow, like GitHub flow, instead of trying to shoehorn Gitflow into your team. Now, clearly, I've taken... Yeah, I also don't like straight-up Gitflow. I don't want all those branches. I'm not, I'm not necessarily... I mean, the hard part is, is that, what the hell is a feature branch? If you work on master, but you push to your remote master, and then you merge your remote master into the team's remote master, is that a feature branch? In my book, that's a feature branch. Where a lot of the problems come from is long-running feature branches, where you can't make your commits atomic. You should really think about feature flags you should find ways to make your your commits much smaller if you start running into that that's that's like that's my own personal opinion like i get that but i still like the idea of having a production branch like the thing that's in production and then the thing that developers are working on i don't really care much more about that if you work in a large c++ application you're going to have releases so then you're going to have 
you know, 2021 version, 2020 version, 2019 version, 2018 version. And these are all masters. They're all in production. They're all running on someone's machine. They just look different. Uh, it's not. Yeah. Hmm. A step further than Vincent did. I contend that long if you aim to living, practice continuous integration. Long living feature branches are the devil. Not the its bigger brother continuous delivery. You need to find an alternative to Git flow. There are a few other things that Vincent says that I disagree with too. Continuous delivery certainly for more than simple web apps that he refers to. Um, ask Tesla, Ericsson or Siemens if you don't know what I mean. But I do want to thank him for making this change. I think it was an honest uh, and a respectable move. Thank you, Vincent. Brian wasn't done though. I thought all me and my homies hate Vincent. Now I like Vincent? I'm confused. I'm having emotional turmoil right now. The number one hit. It's not completely realistic. It's an idealistic method. Yeah, okay. So long as, I mean, because again, even if you have tags and you're on master branch and tags represent production, you still run into this goofy situation where now you have these hot fixes that bounce off of a tag and then get merged back onto the main line. And it's like, yeah, I guess you could say that you could have done from tag to tag. You could have done however you want to do, but it's somewhere something has to, something has to contain these changes. I prefer a branch. Reason why I prefer a branch is I feel like it's easier to make a hot fix, ensure that's working, then go through your deployment process because you have a singular branch in which you deploy off of. So yeah, I tend to like that just better. I will probably always like that better. Hit when you Google for Gitflow is but, on the Atlassian you know, side. There's bigger ones. It now reads as follows. Gitflow is a legacy Git workflow. Yeah. This was originally disruptive and novel strategy for managing Git branches. Gitflow has fallen in popularity in favor of trunk-based workflows, which are now considered best practices for modern continuous software development and DevOps practices. Gitflow can also be challenging to use with continuous integration and continuous delivery. This post details Gitflow for historical purposes. In Vincent Dreesen's revision, he mentioned GitHub flow as an alternative. This is certainly a simpler approach than Gitflow but it's really just describing a feature branch model. In GitHub flow, you do all of the work on a branch until you think it's finished. Uh, so the problem is speed and accuracy of feedback once, once again. The description that Vincent links to doesn't mention continuous integration or testing of any form at all. I this also, how he's describing it also just can't work in open source. Like no one can just push to, to master. You have to have a, a bar somewhere. Just add the word hub. Yeah, you just add the word hub. All right, to me, this, I mean, this is how I like to develop right here. I have feature branches that go into develop. All right, that's all it is. Feature branch, develop. Feature branch, develop. I don't know. This, this whole, like, just push to master business. You know how bad I feel when I break somebody? And so just having this separation and a CI that runs before merge can complete, to me, just seems the best. I don't know. I don't understand I the difference. Maybe I'm mistake. missing something still. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend GitHub flow either. I think that this omission of any mention of testing in the descriptions of both Git flow and GitHub flow is a significant one. To me, both of these strategies read as, if you'll forgive me, sticking plaster fixes for teams that don't do a great job of automated testing. I don't think you need to mention testing. To me, testing is mentioned right here. This arrow from this branch to here is where the testing happens. Like that's how I look at it. I look at that's where testing happens. Test one, test two, test three. Like I see it, I see it right there. The slowdown is that inaccurate feedback enforced by both of these approaches is a problem for continuous integration. It means that we wait too long to find that we've made a mistake. I'd also say this accurate, this diagram is also highly inaccurate. Because look at develop move forward, but there is no other branch to come in and merge in. It suggests that they're pushing both to develop and creating feature branches. But it's inherent to the approaches. Their aim is to give you time to look at and check your work thoroughly. I think that speeding up the feedback cycle is a much better solution to this. It brings the problem into clearer focus. It allows us to evaluate definitive collections of changes together rather than a best guess approximation of what is likely to be deployed into production. The real issue here is how confident are we that our changes are safe? Gitflow and GitHub flow try to make the change process safer by slowing things down, allowing more time presumably for developers to think and check their changes manually or with automated tests on one of, several, one of the several branches.
But as a result of slowing things down and reducing the frequency of integration, the testing on these branches, even if it is very thorough, evaluates collections of changes that aren't the same as what end up in production. So it's not definitive. I think that continuous integration I don't know. I think I fundamentally disagree just with that in general. I think what he just did it was set up a straw man that wasn't correct. I don't see how it's any safer. In fact, I say that it is safer than whatever he proposed because I can always defeat anything he pr uh, proposes by adding a dash n. I don't have to run tests locally. I can just push straight up to master. There's nothing that prevents me from just skipping all, all uh, git hooks from skipping any safety on my system. You need the safety between my system and the system of everybody else's, right? And so it's just like, to me, having that barrier where you have these two, you you it must happen. The idea is that the test will run on the CI, not locally. Well, he said he does his tests, makes sure everything changes, and then pushes to the origin master. So that means there has to be something that takes the push, holds the push, runs the tests, then prevents that push from going in if it breaks because then you just break other people. I'm I'm a little bit I'm a little bit confused by that. Integration makes people nervous because we're exposing changes before developers are finished with their their features that they're building. This is a big change in how we approach our work. It forces us to think and work more incrementally. But this like approach that. more closely represents the reality of software development. In reality, this incremental approach at the heart of continuous integration works not just for simple websites, but for some of the most complex software systems in the world. Taking a genuine engineering approach to software development sometimes means that we have to face difficult realities. In this case, I suppose it comes down to what is the biggest risk, working so that our software is always working, as we do in continuous integration, or even working so our software is always releasable, as we do in continuous delivery. I honestly think we're saying the same thing. I honestly think me and him agree. It's just that what he says is different. Sorry, we were trying to figure out what someone's name meant. Um, they said it was like boobies, but, you know, the whole backwards thing. And so I was confused. But my guess is what I'm saying and what he's saying are li literally the same thing. Is that what he is saying is that he probably has something called uh, his, like, his, you know, me slash dev. Oh, my goodness. This is way too big. This is way too big. Uh, undo, undo, help me. Help me, Tom Cruise. I don't know why I didn't just use Excalibur draw for this. This makes no sense not to use Excalibur draw. Uh, let's just go with 50. All right, so he probably has something like me slash dev, and then there's, a, you know, then there's, you know, everyone's uh, dev, right? And he makes the changes just on this singular branch. No feature branches, it's just the branch itself is what my guess is. And then he merged directly over from this. And then when this gets in, he also rebases it probably on top of this again. And then he probably merges it back over. Some simplified version of this. Uh, something that looks like this. It's just, that's my guess. That's what he is doing. And if that's what he's doing, I would just simply argue this is a feature branch. That's all it is. That's just a feature branch. They just happen to have the same name. If you're on two different origins, it's just a feature branch. I'm right there with you then. I completely agree, right? I completely agree that this is correct. I like this kind of development. I just develop on mine. I go up. I make a PR. It runs the CI. Once I know it's good, I, dev I merge into dev. I take dev, and then I go, and I re-pull it down. I make sure I'm on the latest, and then I develop my next thing, and then I put it back in, right? To me, this just seems like what he was trying to say, but then he also said he pushes directly to this, and I think that's where I got lost. It is, but you'll not have a feature branch in the central repo. I know, but that's just like such a pedantic, stupid difference. If your worry is that you have a, a branch called feature slash some stupid feature, and it's in the main repo versus someone's side re repo, and somehow in the main repo it's bad, but in someone's side repo it's not bad, it's just, it's just so pedantic. It's just mega pedantic. That's all it is, is you're arguing... You're literally saying if the apple's in the fridge, it's good. But if the apple's in the fridge in the garage, it's bad. It's like, no, I don't understand why one's better than the other. The only thing is, uh, yeah, it just doesn't. I, I, We're either talking past each other or he genuinely develops in a way I would never develop. I don't know which one it is. Interesting, though. Very interesting.